and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on Petrology of Fallot. It is the most common congenital heart disease and most of the cases are diagnosed antenatally, which means before the baby was born. There are four cardinal features of Tetralogy of Fallot, which includes the ventricular septal defect, pulmonary stenosis, which is narrowing of the pulmonary valve or the area below the pulmonary valve, right ventricular hypertrophy, and also an overriding iota. These are the four cardinal features, and they are shown in this picture here. The symptoms that the patient might complain, they may present with a heart murmur in the first two months of life. Cyanosis might develop, but it is not immediately after birth. It usually develops later, after a few months. Life-threatening hypercyanotic spells, where there is a rapid increase in cyanosis, which is bluish dis discoloration of the skin and mucous membranes. And these hypercyanotic spells are usually associated with irritability of the infant or inconsolable crying due to severe hypoxia, breathlessness, and pallor. If this condition is left untreated, it may cause myocardial infarction, cerebrovascular accident, and even death. In older child, they may be squatting after exertion because it helps to relieve the dyspnea, which is the shortness of breath. The signs of tetralogy of fallot include cyanosis and finger clubbing. Loud and harsh ejection systolic murmur may be heard at the left sternal edge, which is the pulmonary area, from day one of life. And a single second heart sound can be heard. For investigations, can do chest x-ray, where the typical finding of Tetralogy of Fallot will be a boot-shaped heart, shown in this picture here. The heart looks like a boot. And this is due to the uplifting of the apex due to right ventricular hypertrophy. And we may also be able to see oligemic lung fields. Next investigation is the ECG, electrocardiogram, which will show right axis deviation, signs of right ventricular hypertrophy, and also T tall P wave. P pulmonale for the right atrium enlargement. Echocardiogram can show the detailed anatomy of the pulmonary arteries, helps to confirm the diagnosis, and also assess the extent of the aortic override and other findings, such as the location and degree of the right ventricular outflow obstruction, the size of the pulmonary valves and the pulmonary arteries, and also the site of the aortic arch. For management, most of the cases are suitable for single-stage surgical repair at one or two years of age. And there are some indications for the surgery. Usually the surgery done is the modified Blalock toxic shunt, the BT shunt. And these are some of the indications for surgery, which are hypercyanotic spells or severe cyanosis less than six months old when the child is too young for total repair. Another indication is if there is small pulmonary arteries. This is to promote growth before definitive repair. And also, if anomalous coronary artery crossing in front of the right ventricular outflow tract. And then repair with a conduit required at a later age. So after the surgery, the patient will need to come for lifelong follow-up for late right ventricular dysfunction. And some of the cases, they may need replacement of the pulmonary valve. So this is a picture showing the modified Blalock toxic shunt. The modified BT shunt, which is the surgery for tetralogy of fallot. So in this surgery, the main aim is to create a left to right shunt via the anastomosis of two arteries, which are the subclavian artery and the pulmonary artery. This will help to increase the pulmonary flow distal to the right ventricular outflow obstruction, and it will help to reduce the cyanosis when the oxygenated blood increases in proportion. So that's all for this video, thank you.